the key buying a big. For a moment, just pay attention to what it feels like lying under the bed. What do you mean what it feels like? It feels like lying on the floor. What does it feel like? But see it in a more direct way. By the way, I say lie on your back. Some people have their legs bent. Can you see? There's one who has them. One, you will find another. And another one. And another one. Why does it lie on your back mean for the majority of people stretching their legs? And how come to some people it means bending their knees and standing on their feet? Hmm? Well, then you see that communication is not very easy by words. It doesn't mean a thing. Now you bend your knees again. You will find that those who bend the knees have some trouble. Right. So you can see, look, it's a bad means of communication. When you say lie on your back, it doesn't mean the same thing to everybody. If somebody has some problem in his back, some, inability, some lack of flexibility in the, in the column, somewhere in the lumbar region or in the neck, he finds it much easier to bend the knees than life by answer. Well, we must do something about making people aware how come that they don't understand words with their most common meaning, but make a particular personal interpretation of the word, which then means they cannot communicate with other people and other people cannot communicate with them. It's just distorted. So would you please, those who can't, unless you have some real trouble that holds good for what I said, if you're handicapped in some way and you feel discomfort in stretching your legs, then by all means don't stretch your legs because I said so. But I will do everything humanly possible to make for you comfortable to stretch your legs before we separate. Hmm? Now, would you please now do something very funny? Would you please take both? You see why? Because I have to stop an hour and give you a little break. Would you please put your hands together, cross your fingers, and then see whether you can learn the most comfortable way. You will see actually that it takes a few minutes to realize how Curry is how clumsy we are. You do that, you tear in your hands. I show you now, but normally I don't want you to see because people should be able to... Well, can you see what I should tell you? She, is, she thinks she is in school, and because I can't do that, she has to do it to the best of her ability. Even if she was... We will do it 5,000 times, and her fingers will like a week after that. And not only the shoulders and everything else, because I asked you to, to take them, why do you ask, can you do it more than you did? Slash. Now, slash a little more. Bend your fingers until it takes to read it. <laughs> now, you see, young people are like that. They can do terrible harm to themselves and actually get older before their time and get decrepit long ago before their time just because they do more than they really should do respecting their own comfort. Now, you see, you have to struggle with that all the time. All the time, yeah. You see that the people who are hurt have actually hurt themselves more than, than somebody punished them for misbehavior. Now, would you please, now, I show you because we are beginning and it's difficult. It's a simple moment, but very difficult. Difficult to do it to the best of your ability for your comfort. Otherwise, it's an idiotic moment that you don't have to do. You can die without it. So you now take your hand and make that tiny little move. Yeah. Then you will see that your elbows are held in an idiotic way. No, no, you will see it, not that. Now, do that. Why do you have your hand in there? You think you have to see me because, because you can understand me? Now, keep on doing that. Gently. 
So it's fine if you're doing nothing. Cross your fingers and put it in your stomach and roll that. Roll your hands like that. It, I usually won't explain you why we do it and what for. Because the explanations serve nothing. It's doing that teaches us more sort of thing. But doing is we're doing it in a, such a different way. We want to do it to our sensory apparatus and not to our intelligence. And this moment we do the, the words to the intelligence in a little bit of the sensory apparatus. We want to make the sensory thing dominant. It means what I really feel so that I know that I really feel it. Not only I think I ought to do it because my grandmother said that I ought to do it before I'm 80 years old. Or everybody, to anybody of us, would you please just roll your fingers like that. Roll them. Roll them without any intention of achieving anything. Not making it better. Not making it better. Only slow it down. Slow down to make sure that it's not important. Cross your fingers and move your hand rolling like that. And then I'll explain to you what I, why I do that. But I will explain to you after you've done it so that you don't feel that I suggest it to you and therefore you do it. But if you keep on doing it another few seconds and we get the result before we break, I will tell you what the idea and you will see whether it's right or wrong. Now, correct in your own way. Many of you have dropped the fingers out of real contact. They are not really crossed. Now, as you cross all the fingers, all the fingers, cross them really. And now, would you please do everything you did up to now, only make sure that the left elbow only is not touching the floor. Keep on doing why you're not lying with your hands on your stomach. We ask you to put it down. And then lift your left elbow of the floor and do the same thing. Keep on doing it. Do at least 20 or 30 movements very, very slowly. And don't do them at all if you feel uncomfortable in your shoulders or in your neck or anywhere else. Keep on doing the left elbow in the air, not on the floor. In fact, somewhere at the height of your body if you, if you can to begin with. But don't force yourself if it's uncomfortable. I want you to do only a few 10, 15 movements to feel that it does something. Now, your left elbow should never go to the floor now for about 10, 15 moments. And you do it in such a way that it doesn't affect your breathing. In other words, stop it again and see how you breathe when you do nothing and you don't have any duty to do in your head, don't have to improve or change or become them more perfect. Feel how you breathe. And that's the way, you, the best way of breathing when you want to learn and do something really much better. Slowly. Move your hand. With the elbow not touching the floor. Turn both hands with the elbow not touching the floor. With the elbow not touching the floor. The elbow lifted somewhere above the height of the body. Now you will find that those who have some sort of trouble in the spine or legs or breathing or neck just can't slow down when they do it fast. They can't slow down. And therefore those, most people who find it difficult to stretch their legs will do it either not doing it all practically or move much too fast. Would you please lift your elbow on the floor, your elbow on the floor, and keep on doing it 
the arm, the hand should lie on your body. The hand should lie on the body and roll on the body somewhere. Only the left elbow in there. And you will find that anybody you find it difficult to do so goes much too fast. Only those who have a better posture, better posture, because most of the people here who come don't think that their posture is good. Hmm? Therefore, there are very few, many of you have good posture, but they don't know it. They think it's no good. And many of you think they have bad breathing. And many of you have bad legs. Many of you. In fact, more have bad knees and legs than you can think that in such an audience would be. You have to go slowly and see what happens when you have your left elbow risen in there and see what that makes a difference. And turn your hands as slowly as you can. And observe what sort of remarkable thing that is. The turning of the hands is, of course, neither here nor there. But it is also here very important to do, and you will see why later. But listen what you're doing. You actually directed your internal kinesthetic appreciation to the inside of your body to feel whether you do it more than you want less, than you want comfortable, and what it feels like, the difference in the right hand and the left, and in the right shoulder and the left, when the left elbow is in there. Keep on doing it. And then you will see that if you look at yourself, through the eyes of some people who know something about internal and external context of people, when they look inwardly and look outwardly, like the NLP, then you will see that you actually now directed most of your attention to your inner feelings. In other words, you actually try to find sensorily, not intelligently, not with words. You're trying to find in your own experience what it feels like to have one hand like that and to do a movement which is very familiar to you. In other words, that is learning learn to do the thing you know in a different way. And you will see the more you have different ways of doing the things you know how to do, the more freedom of yourself and of this external world that you find in yourself and you'll find more dignity and greater precision of using yourself in the external world. In other words, you won't break your knees anymore. You won't twist your ankles with that, and those who have already done the injury will find it improved. But keep on doing it. Now, for a few seconds, put both hands, both elbows on the floor, and keep on turning the hands, and you will be surprised if you turn more whether you want it or not. In other words, you can see I have to do with the cream of humanity here. And that's not a joke, and it's not a compliment. I have to do with the cream of humanity for one important reason. There are people who know that they could live a more comfortable life and a life fitting their own structure, with their own thoughts, with their own troubles, with their own structure as they are. And yet somehow they go through the world and they can't find a way of doing something to myself to live that way. You see? Can you please now lift both elbows in there and the hands just over your chest bone, near your throat. Lift both hands so that the arms are practically horizontal to the other and do that. Just feel what it feels like. Keep on doing it. If you look at yourself, you will see that you focus your eyes in a peculiar way, and anybody who is familiar with, the, with this 
neuro linguistic programming, which finds that they twist the eyes in a peculiar way, which has to do with their kinesthetic attention, paying attention to their kinesthetic feeling and not to the visual or auditory, but here you have also that, you listen to me. So, maybe, then you will find out. Now, would you please, as you do that, do that another 10 or 15 moments. And in such a way that it doesn't affect your breathing. You know what? You can stop, take your hands anywhere you like, feel how you breathe when you don't attend to yourself and you do nothing. And then you cross your fingers, already paying attention, that you make no change in yourself for breathing. You're not preparing for something extraordinary. And you can do it just breathing the same way. And why you do another? You'll find some people touch with the thumbs one another. Some people have crossed their hands properly. Why do you have to hold the thumbs to one, one another? Now, I don't know why. I, I don't change it. But we want to know. I say that if you don't know what you're doing, you can never do what you want. In, in other words, when I say you, I mean we, human beings. If we don't know what we are doing, we can never do what we want. Because suppose, stop it for a second, stop it for a second, stop the whole thing for a second. Suppose I didn't know that I hold my head like that. In fact, I have something in my spine where always I find myself, if I look in the mirror, I find it normal to me. I look like that, I hold my head like that. Then, if I don't know that I'm holding my head to the right, in that, in fact, the balance, the weight of my legs is different, and that I'm actually holding more shoulder, in order to have the head on lying on one side more, either you have a scoliosis or you have already generated this or you will generate it if you hold it like that. Then you find actually that from stepping, you step on that foot on which your hand is, easier and other one is free. In other words, if you watch properly, you find like, you do, yep, yep, yep. In fact, if you have a bad knee, you do it without knowing. You have your head to one side, and then you find something, one side you say is actually now, my right side is, I feel my right side doesn't work properly, and my left side is different, and my left side doesn't work properly. And then you will find that you don't know how you do maintain your own trouble. And if you don't know what you are doing, there is nothing in this earth that can make us do the thing we want to do. We can't do it. We do only what we know. And what we know is what we understood and what we heard. And the things that we absorbed from the outside without being able to know whether it's right or wrong. But it's good for me, comfortable or not. Therefore, we must learn to know what we do, what we feel, to be able to do what we want. And in a way that only you know what you want. I can't. I can only see whether you do it in comfort or not. I can see whether your body shows panic, inability, difficulty in breathing, inability to lie. By the way, would you believe it or not that some of the people couldn't stretch their legs, they've already stretched them. Some of the people have stretched their legs. That of may have bigger problems. But some of the people have stretched their legs. And some have actually bent their legs because they suddenly realize that something uncomfortable in that side of the body. Now, would you please now put both hands again, cross your fingers again, and this time bring your hands with both elbows just near the chin, so that the hands are horizontal and the elbows at right angles to the body. 
the train of the hands and that and keep on turning the finger. But don't make it stronger. You will see there is a little there is some oscillation but it's comfortable and if you want to do more to sometimes the elbows, the shoulders, the chest, the neck, the spine are not fit to let our hands to move more than that. And I say this is a small little bit of what you can do, and you will never improve that to yourself. You will never get another way of action unless you learn to take care of yourself and feel comfortable, elegant, and aesthetically right. And that this feeling should be proved by the external circumstances, by your action, to be the best for you and not make you miserable so that you think you are going to catch growth by the beard, and in fact you don't catch him but by other growth of hair somewhere else. So, slowly, gently, Can you feel that something is happening in the shoulders and in the chest and in the breathing? And in fact, if you look at it, not everything is so symmetrical. Would you please now move both hands so that they, they are above your left shoulder? Means from the middle until both hands are above the left shoulder. But gently, if you can't move a quarter of that, if you can't, don't move at all. And then keep on turning your hands and see what happens. And then you see, you can't do that turning without listening to yourself, without actually finding out how on earth did I make my spine so stiff, my shoulders so unable to move, that this movement is difficult to do and we can do only about a tenth of what a normal hand can do, or what your hands will do at the end of this evening. Therefore, when I said that I feel I've got the cream of the earth here, it's not because I'm trying to be complimentary to you. I find that here are people who found that their life didn't work the way you want, that they did things they thought were right, and somehow something did not work. Strain this, broke this, not successful in that, get misery around me, to the people I love and the people I don't love make misery to myself and to others. We do that. Every one of us. You see? And this is done because we don't really know what we want. We don't know fundamentally what we want. We are alienated and you will see, we will find later reasons. But this is important because you see, we told you put the left hand over your left shoulder. Many people can't do it. Then put it halfway, a quarter of the way, a tenth of the way. Then do the thing you can, easily. Now move both hands over the right shoulder. And see, maybe it's this side is easier. Is it? Slowly. Turn your hands, keep on turning your hands. But put both hands over the right shoulder, over the right shoulder, or as near as Dennis to it, the near, as near as you can. Now gently, slowly, put your hands on your stomach again, and try to roll them now, see what happens. Is it different? Put them on your stomach, you're doing it in the air. Put them on the stomach, you know, the stomach, and now hold your hands and see the difference. I work a little longer because I did a lot of talking, therefore it doesn't matter if you work another few minutes. Will you please, all of you, bend your knees and put your feet on the floor. And that's why then stay like that. Put them on the floor, but the distance between the feet 
at the moment I forgive you. But in that, some people hold the feet completely together, some too wide open. Nobody knows that but you. Everyone that can know whether the feet are too near or too wide, provided we have an inner sensory appreciation which corresponds to the reality of our structure, feeling, and the situation in the external space in the outside world that has the end gravitational field at the floor. And if you come to that, you will find some people touch the knees together and the feet apart. Some do something else. How does a normal, ideal human being behave? Like you, or like I, or like him, or like her? In other words, who of us is a normal human being? Huh? Then you'll find that when you look at that, we are all normal and abnormal. But we can do better to ourselves and for the people around us than we do. But first we must do something good for ourselves, no matter what it is. We must get to feel what is comfortable for me. Would you now please put both hands as they are, cross with your hands, put them on your forehead, and roll them on your forehead. Roll the hands as you did, but on your forehead. Slowly. Slowly. And of course, by the way, can you see most people hold their breath? and are so attentive to what they do, as if it was important to do it. It's not important. It's only important in as much as it brings you into a state where you listen to yourself and what are you are organized and what feels comfortable to you. And you will see that the thing we thought comfortable at the beginning was not comfortable. Now, maybe I should tell you why I think you are the cream of the world again. Not because you are the cream of the world, but because you have the idea that you have been not doing the best you can in your, in your world, in your body, your body, that's idiotic, you haven't got a body, you've got a mind and a body, a brain and a body, and none of them can exist without the other. And none of them function with one another. Then it's you. We say your body, my body, as if I can sell it or change it. Or I can go away and leave it somewhere. Or I can change, exchange a piece which is broken. If it's your car, you can do it. If it's your horse, you can do it. But if it's me or you, none of us can do it. Therefore, it's not our body, it's we. It's myself. And if my knee is not right, it's not my knee is not right, and I can go and have an artificial knee put there. When you have that, then your knee and you yourself are not worth much. But my knee is only I am aching in the knee. But of course, we can't say that. So I will also say I have my knee is hurting. Though I rarely do that, I feel like doing something or saying something idiotic. Because my knee is hurting, then why do I care? I care because I am aching, not my knee. And actually the knee for as it is is of no importance to anybody. But to my feeling that it can, I feel pain. So I am in trouble, not my knee. My knee, of course, is there is some sort of a way in which I express my trauma and the way I got my trauma there. But we will see later that it, this is also not an accident. Most of the time it's your our own misunderstanding of our comfort and what is possible to do in the world without sacrificing my well-being and my sanity and my wholeness of myself. Therefore, I myself destroyed my knees, so I can't say that somebody who has destroyed his knees, that he is sillier than I. I was sillier than I did it before him. 
But with this broken, useless knee, you can see I can still do a lot of things that other people with good knees can't do. And that is not because I can, because all of us can. All of us can, otherwise I wouldn't be able to get there. I have the only merit of having thought that it's after years of trying to be helped by people who should know and couldn't, I find myself as being brought to my own senses. I could objectively and subjectively find the way in which I could examine myself and to find what is comfortable to me or not. And once I got that I feel I found that I can use my destroyed knees almost as well as anybody who has never had any trouble with his knees. Certainly at my age there's nobody who can use them better. And when I say nobody is of course it's idiotic. I always find somebody who does better. Therefore, you can see what communication is. You can't say a word without saying, I didn't mean it. <laughs> and when you laugh, you will learn better. Now, would you please pay attention now. You roll your hand again on your stomach, but you stretch your right leg only. The left leg remains. Keep on doing it and see how it affects your rotation in the head. Now, of course, you are now free to use your elbows the way you want and your shoulders, put them above there. You have three minutes of doing with your hands whatever you like, provided you are not hurried and you don't try to ruin yourself. Hey! Would you please stop? Now, you will find another thing. Young people believe that because they are a little bit subtler than that and because they have not learned enough of the external world, and because they've been taught, like every one of us, that unless they do something to show that they are clever, they are no good and they are not worth living. They shouldn't be there. So they will find that they will try to do something by learning. When you finish the learning, do anything you want. I won't tell you yes to do or not to do. I'm only trying to provide the best conditions for you learning. And therefore, Therefore, I have you're not learning, you're trying to show that you can do something that you think other people can't. Or maybe you have no confidence that you can. You're not so sure that you can do it. That's why you're trying to do something which is not left and not necessary, in which you pay money and you do something which is not necessary for your learning. Therefore, when you try to do something now, above what we understand more or less, what you're doing, and you're trying to show that you can tell your hands more, and you can do that, and you can do that, and everybody you here can do that. So don't be so proud of yourself. And be a little bit more appreciative of your real ability. But that's as you show that you can do more than she and more than he. It's a war. It's a war. A horse can do better than that. And a dog too. And the bird too, and the fly too. Now, do whatever you can. Just, just observe what it feels like. Now, would you please, for your own appreciation, do the same thing with the hands. How you find that your hands are quite different afterwards? Put your hands together again, and do it any way you like. Provided you don't alter your breathing and you lift your right leg on the floor at least a quarter of an inch. No, lift it as much as you can until you break your neck and then lower it and lift it only as much as you want here now. Lift it as little as you can and see what, how it affects your hands. Did they get tenser? Is your movement stronger? Then stop the damn thing, lie down still and correct your breathing, and now lift, continue turning your head as gently as you can, attending to your breathing and to the lifting of the leg that they should not affect the tension and the strength in your hands while you do it. And then if you 
Can you do that? Which I don't believe you because I can see you're not doing, you're holding your breath. Not slowly. See whether you can lift your leg without altering your breath and without altering the intensity of your hands in your shoulders and your arms. Slowly. Slowly. Now, stop and don't do it slowly. Lift your leg. Doesn't matter. Properly or improperly. Not much. Not much. That's idiotic in general. Because we don't want to lift our legs. It's not for lifting the legs that we do it. And don't tell me that you can lift your legs. Everyone here can lift the legs except those who are crippled. So what's the point of doing it? Lift the leg a little bit off the floor. Lift the leg, the knee and everything. Those who can, those who can't, don't do it. Think it. Lift the leg a little bit off the floor. And now watch. Can you breathe as freely as when the leg is on the floor? If you don't know, move your hands and see. If there is more intensity in the hands, you're not breathing. Move your hands and see. Move your hands and see. And of course, it's very difficult to realize because we are not used at all to, to feel. They're used only to think and torture ourselves. The kind of imaginary things we want. I did it all my life, so I know. Slowly. Now do that and slowly let go of the leg and see how it affects your breathing in the moment of the head. And then you will see something remarkable that you have to learn to the end of this group that before we are involved with our entire being in an act, the act is done in a idiotic way. doesn't matter how well you think you're doing. Any act that you do, and you are not involved with your past, with your future, with your relations to others, and the relation to yourself, and you decide you're doing something good for yourself, it is a compulsive act. And the compulsive thing is to ruin you. You will actually suffer to that act which you think you're doing right for yourself. Because it's not adjusted to reality. It is a memory of our troubles that we had all our life. And we forget that at a certain moment. And, and luckily for us, otherwise we wouldn't normally, without this sort of thing, we wouldn't be able to live if we did otherwise. Now we will see that it's possible to get a kind of organization of, of oneself which makes things more comfortable, more reliable for ourselves, not for somebody else. For ourselves. And you will find that once you get that and feel elegant and aesthetically right, you will find that your relation to your next person to whom you have some sort of feeling to will change in a way which will bring you comfort, elegance, and self-confidence, and of course aesthetic satisfaction. Otherwise, doesn't matter what you do, it will be a workout anyway, for everybody. For everybody. Very gently, well, we, I think we will stop in spite of it so that we have another chance of doing something else. Would you please now stretch your arm? Just feel what it feels like in your arms. Lift both hands to the ceiling and turn them around themselves, around their arm. Just feel, and should they hands be with the fingers stretched? or not stretch. The great majority of people don't stretch. But some do. And some do some very elaborate artistic movement. Would you please stop doing that? <laughs> Would you please do ugly movement? And then you will see that you can't do ugly movement. That means this is a compulsion movement. This is no good. It's compulsion, the hands are stiff. And yours too. 
Yes, too. In the elder justice. And everybody, except that you, you will find that whatever I teach, I find in any audience a number, and not negligible number, that does it from the start as if they have been through the course long ago. That shows you that what I do in order to help the learning process in everybody else is actually based on human structure, human functioning, and the way our nervous system learns. And that's why it will work whether we want it or not. And if you are not better just now, you will be better in the week or ten days after you leave the course. You will feel some of the things that you do for yourself. You will also, if you pay attention, you will see that your dreams will change. Mine depends also on what I relate to other people and to myself. And yours too. And especially to myself. Other people are only auxiliary. Because when I dream, then the other people I feel are also eyes. But I think of them when I identify myself with other person. Therefore, whatever we think in a dream, it's usually an interjection or an introspection or a projection of ourselves. Therefore, it's much complex than meets the eye. Move gently. Turn your hands. Turn your hands. Don't, don't open them. Don't close them. Turn them around the axis of the arm. Turn them. Turn your hands around the axis of your arm. It means that you learn no, it gently. But then if you want to turn them, why do you have to make such an effort in your arms? Why do you have to make such an effort in your arms? Why? I don't know, but the fact that you make an effort, and it is that sort of thing. Now, would you please put your hands on your stomach now? Yeah. Bend your knees and tread on your feet. And now, just three movements with your hands. Interlace your fingers again. Roll them on your stomach and see what it feels like. See whether the movement has increased, whether the quality, that's more important than the summer, whether it's increased or not. The quality has improved. The quality of the mobilization has improved. Therefore, there is some sort of tension reduced somewhere, somewhere in the shoulders, and mostly in the brain, in the motor cortex, which makes it possible for other parts of our body to be influenced by the lightness that we have actually experienced in the most conscious part of ourselves. Actually, second only, the more conscious part, and that's the mouth. But the hands, that's the most conscious part of human beings. About 3,000 different skills are done by the hands of human beings. And therefore, each hand like that has its own peculiarities. And therefore, has its own structure and patterns in the brain which cannot be resolved. Now, here we are doing something to resolve that. In other words, we make that pattern loose again so that we can structure it to our own perspective. And you will be surprised what it has done to your eyes, to your neck, and when we get up, would you please stretch a minute? Just let go of everything. Put the hands on either side of the body. Just like that. Just think. You remember at the beginning you have to pay attention how you're lying. You'll find now that the floor can tell you. In other words, the floor can't speak at all. But you can feel the floor talking to you because you feel how you're lying. And then you will realize that whether you want it or not. There is a sufficient chain in the shoulder blades and in the chest and in the pelvis and in the small of the back that they lie on the floor as if it were a waterbed. In other words, you have never been able in your life to lie like that with stretch leg and having the small of the back on the floor. In other words, that this movement of the hand, which is the most conscious part of our motor cortex, 
is good. The hand is the most representative thing with which we caress, with which we love, with which we do, with which we wipe our ass when we are in the toilet, and in which we do every damn thing that is agreeable or disagreeable. And in fact, in our sexual life, it's also involved. And I thought, you cannot do with your hands. Anything that feels to you really expression of yourself, in other words, you don't caress, you sweat in your hands, your hands are stiff, your other hands may be clumsy, disagreeable to touch, and some people may love us in spite of that, but it is a bloody news. Yet, yet, in our makeup, in our brain, it feels an indissoluble way. You don't find a way of changing it. And we don't want to change it. We want only to learn another better way. Another way so that we have the choice of using ourselves in one way, a second way, a third way, and a fifth way. In other words, we are not worse and not better than an IBM perfect machine. Um, phylogenetically as inherited, like the barking of a dog, which is the same in San Francisco, in New York, and in China, and in Eskimo land. But human beings living in San Francisco and here, and in China, in Eskimo land, speak four different languages, and have four different ways of living, in every respect. Yes. Therefore, there is some learning going on in our brain while we grow up to be what we are. And if we have those compulsive things, then in the things we do, we think we do them rightly. In those things lies our misery. It's not in the bad things we do that we are miserable. It's not in the mistakes we do that are miserable. It's on the things where we think we do right to ourselves. In those things we are blind, that we are compulsive, and we actually, this is the thing which represents our life. Not the fault. If you did a fault once, twice, you may even decide to kill somebody, but you're still reliable, because somebody may have been so nasty that you would want to kill him. But some of you don't know when he kills. He believes that he's right. He can kill 15 times and he does know. Can you see the difference? All right, now, would you please do something besides feeling how it feels to lie now? When you, would you please have your hands as you were, holding them close like that, try to turn them gently, walk to you, pay attention to your breathing. Pay attention to the amount of power you put there when it's necessary or not, and in which part of yourself are you actually trying to violate your own privacy. And while you do that, and you attend to your breathing being as simple as it was without moving your hands, would you please take half an hour, take half an hour, to get up means roll to one side of you, provided you can not stop the movement of the hand. If you stop the movement of the hand, you can get up and go, I don't care. In the first lesson, I don't expect you to be able to do it. Keep on turning and see whether you can think of something original for you, like getting up, and see which way will you do it, right or left, and how will you do it. She don't tell me the hand and feet, and then you will see the tremendous change that occurred in our brains, all of them, me speaking to you, you listening and doing it. And see that you will get up for that you have never did in your life. But not the best. This is only a beginning. Do anything, any way you think, provided you can get up without stopping the rotation of your head. Don't stop, even for a tenth of a second, don't stop. Now, I don't expect anybody to be able to do it. 
But do it. You can attempt. Then you will see how badly we are organized. You will see how badly our kids. Yeah. Come on, you sit up. You think I saw that you did. I thought that you stopped the moment when you held your breath. Now, you can't get up like that even if you're a genius. Even if you're a gold medalist. In the Olympic Games, you wouldn't get up like that. You wouldn't. Once you sit, you wouldn't know how to get up. Lie again on the floor. And I, can, you, can you see the difference? I asked, I told you, that you will find that we are so wired in, that we have to do it immediately. I told you, I give you half an hour to do it. So you can take at least two minutes for that. But nobody does. Everybody sits up in order to show how clever he is. Then I can tell you, I could do it better than you. And that is no reason why you shouldn't do it better than I. But you never try it. You never know even how bad you are. Now don't stop. Nah, you stop. Lie down again. You will find that actually the most successful people in this world can't get up without stopping really. And anybody who admits that he can't have a better chance of getting up. Because he will learn that he is important and not the getting up and not what you think of him. Huh? For the first time you will appreciate what he thinks or she thinks of herself. Really. And you are allowed to do it in public to think of yourself. And that certainly won't be your first time in your life. First time in your life, you can lie down again and try again. In fact, if you believe that it's possible to do a new way of doing it without making mistakes and without learning from your mistakes how to do it, you're mistaken. And that's why we are talking about the things we do, and I told you about comfort and misery and my own experience. It is like that. Unless you make mistakes, you wouldn't know how to organize yourself to do it what is comfortable to you. You will find actually the things you thought, that's what I say, the things you thought you're doing the best for yourself, you were actually using the most compulsive part of your person. And therefore the effect is actually points where you don't expect them. Other people can detect it better than you. Than we do. And we are all like that. If we weren't all like that, it would be marvelous. But we can all do better for ourselves. Slowly. Now, don't worry if you don't do it well. But you can see, you can see that when you are given, you give yourself the real object of doing something really comfortable for yourself, by doing such a small, little, idiotic movement to the head. You find that you're getting up, you're lying, you're sitting, our getting up, our lying, our sitting, our use of the legs, our use of the pelvis, our use of our sex, our idiotic below anything which we are allowed to have, and we should and we can. All right? Now then why should we use such a bad self? How, how do we use ourselves so badly? That we hurt everybody around us and ourselves. Now that's not a question of being that you should not hurt anybody. I say that anybody who hurts himself and others is actually acting against his own interest and other person's interest. And both of our interests are the same. Slowly, gradually. Just make, do it any, do it wrongly. But get up and see whether you stop turning your hands. And it was rubbish. If you stop turning your hands and you hold your breath, it shows that you are not in possession of all your needs. And how come that an intelligent woman should not have all of me? Obviously, there is something that you can recuperate in your quality of doing, which you will find extraordinarily important. So, now stop it. Get up anyway. Because if you wait like that, it will take you five days to get up. 
Get up slowly in the bed way, but you will feel that it's bad. Huh? Most of the time will tell you it's bad, you will feel that it's bad. Now slowly, slowly stand and feel what sort of difference do you feel in yourself by standing. Have you care do you carry your head tall? Do you feel heavier, smaller? Perfect. Now there is another important thing. We are a crowd of strangers mostly. Therefore you feel no oh, she is strange, I must not touch her and I ask you to go around and look at each other's backs. Look at the back of somebody around you, doesn't matter who. But just see. Look at them, whether they know it or not. Look at their backs and see how they are, so that you can find out of their next day when they have changed something. You will think, oh, I thought you had wings on your back. And the smaller the back is your out or in or whatever it is. Oh, you stand quite differently. Now go on out, feel, are your legs lighter or heavier? Is your breathing Feel or less? Is there some change in the face? Can you feel any change in your face? Does it feel longer or squeezed? How is your mouth? How is your breathing? Now just move, lift one hand and see what it feels like to lift the hand. Don't matter. Lift one hand and lower it and see. Do you know that feeling of that ease that moving? Or is it something new to you? And now, we should be finishing, but we, I'll give you a few minutes, just a few minutes rest, five minutes rest, and we'll go back to do something very briefly. Huh? So, now you're free for ten, five, ten minutes. 